What's going on, guys and gals? My name's Sean, and if you landed here, you're watching Scar My Guitar. What's going on, everybody? Good to see you back. Now, today, we finna step away from the Amazon guitars. We finna look at a genuine, bona fide, certified Fender. And I don't know if you remember, but a long time ago, after I got that Leo James Telly, I said if Gibson or Fender ever wants to send me a guitar for free, I would gladly take it. As long as they knew I would tell the truth about their guitar. Now, I don't know if Fender's been hearing me drag them a little bit here and there lately. I don't know what prompted them to reach out to me. But I told them, I said, look, if you send me a guitar, I finna tear it apart. I finna go through it. And I finna tell everything I see. So make sure you're ready for that. And I was kind of surprised when they wrote me back and said, that's exactly why we're going to send you a guitar. We want you to do that. Now, I'm going to say this now before we even get started on this video. This is a $1,200 guitar. And before we even get started, in my mind, it better have some gold or diamonds on it somewhere. And I'm being dead serious. With today's CNC machining, man, everybody in the world is making great guitars. Now, I know this guitar right here is made in Mexico. But it still amazes me at how many of you guys still swear by American-made guitars. I got news for you. Here in the American factories, I wouldn't doubt it if there's a little dope smoking going on in the back. Some horse playing and crap going on in these American factories that ain't going on in them overseas factories. Yeah, I don't know if that's true or not. But, I mean, I've worked a lot here in America. I know what goes on on the job site. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to be able to judge this guitar's price fairly. So I'm going to let you guys do it. I want you to put it in the comments when this video's over what you think you should pay for this guitar. And be realistic when you price it, man. I mean, after all, it's made in Mexico. Half the parts probably come from Korea or somewhere. I don't know. But is it worth 1200 bucks? I guess the only way we're going to find out is if we look at this. And what this is, is a Fender guitar and a gig bag. I've already taken it out of the box. The box was fairly beat up too but today we got a lot to do because we're going to be comparing this guitar as well looks pretty good gig bag looks pretty good that's a $1,200 carrying guitar gig bag let's look at the gig bag hmm. a lot of you guys say those Fender gig bags are way better than those cheap guitar gig bags well, here's a Folgio gig bag. Came with a $100 guitar. I, I, I see the pocket here, but it's, it's got one here. I kind of prefer the pocket this way, too, because that gets caught on stuff. Maybe it's that little pick and that logo that makes this one so special. Now, hang on just a dang minute. Sean, man, that Fender gig bag's way better than that Folgio gig bag. Really? I mean, bro, look, tell me how. Put in the comments why you think that. They're the same thickness. The only difference is one says Fender, one says Fojo, one's got a little pig hanging off of it. I mean, why Why you think it's so much better? Seriously, why do you think the Fender one is so much better? All right, I get it. The Fender's got these two different pockets. That's got to be what it is. But anyway, let's crack it open. It's just inside a bag. All right, headstock first. Now there's that iconic headstock everybody loves. Ooh, he's got the Fender logo in silver. Nice. Nice wavy finish on the headstock. Hey, that bridge looks familiar. Yeah, I have. I've seen that bridge before. I don't know where. Oh, on my guitar. <laughs> yep, that's made in Korea. This fretboard is really cool, man. It's some kind of rosewood, I'm thinking. Yeah, it's probably Peril or or however you say that. But it's real close to rosewood. Beautiful, though. Man, that's some nice looking wood. Beautiful outer for the body, too. Look at that. Nice green on that cherry burst, man. Yeah, the back looks cool, too. Got a little knot there. I mean, it's only 1200 bucks. I guess it's like some kind of tobacco cherry burst or something. 
Satin finish on the neck. Beautiful. Korean made lock and tuners. It's been inspected by all those guys right there. But he's got those fender noiseless pickups in him. I bet he's going to be smacking for sure. I don't see any checkerboard on that neck. So that means it ain't quarter song. Now if I told you I don't think that guitar looks killer, I'd be telling you a bald face lie. Because it does and I love it. But what makes it worth $1,200? It's just got a plain outer body, not even quarter sawn neck, Powell Farrell fretboard or something like that. I mean, all those materials aren't expensive. So it must be in the setup. So let's get that thing off the table and play it a little bit unplugged. All right, I got the Fender all tuned up. Beautiful guitar, look at it. <laughs> this thing is amazing looking. I'm a sucker for a Fender, man. These are my favorite guitars in the whole wide world. They always have been. I mean, but man, 1200 bucks. Sounds good. It's got some really high action straight out of the box. It needs a setup. It does. It needs a setup. You also hear this. That pingy ringy. I have to fix this. It's probably been cut too big. That's straight out of the box. $1,200 guitar. Yeah, at this point, I'm thinking Fender's probably never going to send me another guitar, but that's okay. I don't want them to send me any more guitars that aren't ready to play out of the box if they cost $1,200. And then I'm supposed to show it to you guys like it's cool. But I'm about to put all the 20 minutes into this thing, setting it up and getting it ready to play. But I'm going to tell you what I think the guitar is really worth here in the end. But you go ahead and put yours down there in the comments now so you can compare it to mine in the end. Now, we ain't got to do a whole lot of work to this either. It just needs a good setup. I can tell that already. But I tell you what, we still got to take it apart. And it ain't going to do it itself. So that's enough flip flapping. Let's make it happen. Now before we go taking anything or messing with anything, let's look at the frets up close. I don't know why they wouldn't nip the tang on this. You see it? You see the metal tang on the end of the fretboard there? Yeah, I'll never understand why they wouldn't do that. Or why the fretboard is so thin on a $1,200 guitar. I don't know what kind of strings Fender uses, but we're going to take them off now. Now, I already know this thing's got a bow in it, because I look down it, it's just like this. So it's making it have that super high action. So let's level this baby out here. A couple quick turns of this order to do it. Yeah, it looks pretty good, but we'll give it one little more tug. Giggity. Yeah, nice and level now. Let's see how level these guys are. They are super level. Yeah, they're nice and level. Not only are these frets nice and level, they're also polished pretty good. I mean, I can see barely minimal anything wrong with them. Other than that tang on the side, there's a little bit sticking out. I'm going to hit that with a file here and get rid of it. But the fret works great. Look at it. Yep, great. Yeah, that little sharp tang on the side. It's gonna, you hear it? Gonna rub that till it goes away. Can't hear no more metal scraping. We'll do the same for this side. It's mainly here. 
a little bit there. That'll do it. Yeah, it's going to be much better. Take the neck off. Is there a hole here? No hole. There's a 0.8 millimeter gap lip over the edge of the neck here. I don't know if you can see it or not. All right, let's see if it fits the neck pocket good. Got a loosey goosey here. Well, dang it, there is a hole there. It just don't go all the way through. It's not for something here. Is that adjustable? What is that, guys? Tell me what that is. What's that there for? Is that the truss rod end? Who knows what that is? Put it in the comments. What's that plus sign? I ain't gonna lie to you, that's new for me. What is all this? Who knows what all that is? What's going on in this neck pocket, man? Man, those Mexicans are more scribble happy than them Chinese guys are. Look at that. They wrote all in there with all, there's like five different color marker and pen in there. Yeah, I don't know what this big hole is for either, but it's weird. But how do you authenticate this with all this freaking stuff in it? Let's see what treasures lie under here. Because we already know it's got the Boss Electronics. I'm sure this is going to be a... Ooh, gee, gee, gee. Yep. Yep. Got an old push-pull. What that push-pull does is it turns the neck and the bridge on in the bridge position. And in the middle position, it gives you all three. Nice. Wiring's kind of crazy. But when it's got a lot, it usually is. All right, Fender, what you got under here? Tight wiring. It's always got this weird scribbles on everything Fender does. I don't know. Does that make it worse more when they scribble on it? Yeah, but scribbled on or not, I bet you these guys are smacking. I guess this is how you authenticate it? I'm not sure. Bro, look. It's got a garage sale sticker in it. That looks like the little sticker you see on somebody's stuff at their garage sale. And he needs a little shim. It's just a little tiny little strip of paper, but it needs a little something because these things are digging in my hand up here. Let's take this plastic off of here first. I heard so many guys in the comments say that plastic under this right here is to help protect the guitar's finish and blah, blah, blah. Why don't Fender do it? There's no plastic here to protect nothing here. Explain me that one in the comments. Yep, yeah, no plastic thing under there. These lock and tuners work real good, but you can buy them on eBay and Amazon for anywhere from $40 to $55, I think. All right, the Fender's Player Plus Nashville Telecaster. It's all set up. But what did it really need? That's the question. What did this guitar really need straight out of the box? Let's count it up. Need a little truss rod tweak? Needed the sides of the frets knocked down a little bit. String change, a little cleanup action. Oh yeah, I did put a little shim in there too. Make sure those bridge saddle screws wasn't digging in our hand here. It's pretty much all it needed. But let's play it unplugged.
already know this thing's gonna sound killer. Let's turn it up. Alright, let's pull this up. It'll give us the neck with the bridge. So it's like it's in the middle on a regular three-way switch. Let's put it up one. That'll give us all three. All right, let's push this down. That'll give us the bridge in the middle. Sounds like a killer strat, man. Middle position is just the strat pickup. fourth position, whatever you prefer. Sweet. All right, the neck. Here comes the fun part. What do I think this guitar is actually worth? Here's a fun little fact for you. Something you didn't know before the video. Purchase same guitar, 
given for review saying guitar. And the reason I did that was because I wanted to see if they were going to send me a ringer. And they both had the exact same issues. I mean exact same issues. Both needed a truss rod adjustment. Both could use a little shim. Tiny little bit of fret sprout. And that stuff that I easily took care of, I could have done that blindfolded, man, for real. You could have blindfolded me and I could have took care of that stuff. And both of them having the same little tiny issues shows me they're consistent. Man, they could get rid of that fret sprout by just simply nipping that fret tang. And as far as a truss rod tweak goes, I mean, that's going to happen. If your guitar changes temperatures a lot, it's going to happen. You're going to have to tweak that truss rod. But is it worth $1,200? Not to me. I'm going to say that's an $800 guitar. Yep, if I went and bought every single part on that guitar, minus the neck and the body, I'm in for what, $350? Maybe $380? But I do have to remind you of this, and this is true now. Those guitars needed very little work. Both of them needed the same thing. That shows consistency. Both things on that guitar were something that you could fix easily yourself and that are pretty much unavoidable when they get shipped in different temperatures. But I hope Fender don't get mad at me for this video because that is a killer guitar. It's just about $400 too much. Like I said, I might get hung for this, but it's, it's nothing special. Doesn't have no thick flame top or binding all over it. I mean, it just doesn't. It's just a plain old wooden guitar. I mean, <laughs> it's just a plain guitar. Yeah, Fender, you're pricing us low guys out of it, man. That's 75% of your audience can't afford that guitar at that price. Now, like I said, you put it down there in the comments what you think it's worth. Right now, that guitar sells for $1,030 plus tax. You're $1,200 out the door. So what do you think it's worth? Put it down there. Maybe Fender will listen. Because it is a monster guitar, man. That thing sounds amazing. I think everybody should have one. But at that price, it's just out of reach. But if you guys want Fender to hear anything, I know they're going to see this video. So put it down in the comments, guys. But like always, me and Kathy really appreciate you watching. And I hope to see you in the next video. But until I do see you again, don't you touch my scar guitar. Don't you touch my scar guitar.